This video explains how to apply the outer function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first part of this tutorial, I will show you a very basic application of the outer function. And in this example, I'm applying the outer function to a range from one to five and to the value three. So if you run lines two and three of the code, you can see that these two data objects are appearing at the top right. And now in the next step, I'm applying the outer function to our two data objects, as you can see in line five of the code. So within the outer function, I'm specifying the name of the range, which is called x1, and the name of our single value, which is called y1. And then I'm specifying the plus operator because I want to add the values in those two data objects. And I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling output1. So if you run line 5 of the code, this output1 object is appearing at the top right. And we can print this output to the RStudio console by running line 6 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a matrix object. And this matrix object contains the result of adding the values in x1 to the value 3. So the first value is adding 1 plus 3. The second element is adding 2 plus 3 and so on. So in this first example, I have shown you a very basic application of the outer function. However, we can apply this function to much more complex data. And in the next examples, I want to show you more complicated applications of the outer function. So in the second example of this tutorial, I want to apply the outer function to two numeric ranges. And for that, I'm creating two new data objects, which are called x2 and y2. And the data object x2 is containing the range from 1 to 5 once again. And the data object y2 is containing a range from 3 to 7. In the next step, in lines 11 and 12 of the code, I'm also naming these data objects because I want to create a matrix output that contains certain column and row names. So after running lines 8 to 12 of the code, our input data objects are created. And then in the next step in line 14, we can apply the outer function to these two data objects as we already did in the first example. So if you run line 14 of the code, another output object called output2 is appearing. And if we print this output to the bottom in the RStudio console, you can see that we have created a matrix. The column names of this matrix are corresponding to the vector object y2. And the row names of this matrix are corresponding to the vector object x2. And now you can see the values in this matrix are corresponding to the result when we are adding the elements of those two vectors together. So for instance, the first element is 1 plus 3 is equal to 4 or let's say the last element is five plus seven is equal to 12. So in this second example, I have explained how to apply the outer function to two integer vectors. However, it's also possible to apply the outer function to character vectors. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 17 of the code. So in lines 17 and 18, I'm creating two vector objects containing letters. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that the two new vector objects are appearing at the top right. And as in the previous example, I'm naming these vector objects to create an output matrix that contains certain row and column names corresponding to the values in these vectors. And then in line 23 of the code, I'm applying the outer function to these two data objects. However, this time I'm not using the plus operator to add our two data objects together, but this time I'm using the paste function. And for that reason, I'm specifying the character string paste at the third position of the outer function. And once again, I'm creating a new output object that I'm calling output three in this example. So if you run line 23 of the code, this output object is appearing at the top right. And we can print this output to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 24 of the code. And then you can see that we have created another matrix. The row names of this matrix are corresponding to the data object x3. 
and the column names of this matrix are corresponding to the data object Y3. And as you can see, the result of this is always the result of applying the paste function to those two characters. So for instance, the first element is the result of applying the paste function to the character A and the character upper case A. So until now, I have shown you how to apply the outer function to functions that are already existing in the R programming language. However, it's also possible to specify user-defined functions within the outer function. And this is what I want to show you in the final example of this tutorial, starting in line 26 of the code. So in lines 26 and 27, I'm once again creating two vector objects as input for the outer function. So after running these lines of code, the two vectors ranging from 1 to 5 and 3 to 7 are created. And then in lines 29 to 32 of the code, I'm specifying a custom function that is performing a certain calculation based on the input values x and y and returns this result. So if you run lines 29 to 32 of the code, you can see that a user-defined function is appearing at the top right. Next, I'm also naming our input vector objects to create a named output matrix. So after running lines 34 and 35 of the code, our two input vectors are named. And then in line 37 of the code, I'm applying the outer function to our two named vector objects. And I'm specifying our custom function that we have created before. So if you run line 37 of the code, a new output object is appearing, which is called output4. And if we print this output to the RStudio console, you can see that the elements of this matrix are corresponding to the result of applying our custom function to our two input vectors x4 and y4. So for instance, the first element 16 is the result of 1 plus 3 to the power of 2. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.